Today we're going to talk about Monero and why this coin is the true cryptocurrency that sticks to the original roots of what crypto is supposed to be about. Now if you aren't familiar with these roots, let me give you a quick history lesson. So most people consider Bitcoin to be the first cryptocurrency. It was created by Satoshi Nakamoto, who might be a person or a group of people, nobody really knows. Now, some of the key principles that Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies share is that they require no central authority. So there isn't a central bank or government that can control crypto and the crypto cannot be arbitrarily created or counterfeited. This is a huge difference compared to the fiat currency that so many countries use like dollars or euros, which can be created at any time whenever the government wishes for whatever reason. For example, about one-fourth of all the U.S. currency that is in circulation today was just created in the last year from the multiple stimulus packages that the government created, which will likely cause some inflation. Cryptocurrencies are essentially decentralized, peer-to-peer -peer networks that cannot be subverted by banks or government. Now, one common misconception about Bitcoin is that it is private, and this couldn't be any further from the truth. In fact, Bitcoin is less private than using a credit card because every single transaction is public. You could just look on the blockchain and see every transaction that has ever been made. You can see which wallets have exchanged money, when they exchanged it, and how much Bitcoin was in the transaction. Now, at first, this wasn't such a big problem because it's not like you can actually see people's names and addresses on the blockchain. All you can see is their wallet address, which is just a bunch of different letters and numbers. So if you manage to keep your wallet address a secret, nobody is going to know that it actually belongs to you. And in the days of the Silk Road, this is what people did. Most of the Bitcoins in use were either mined or bought directly from miners who didn't require any ID to sell you Bitcoins. They just wanted cold hard cash. Exchanges changed everything though, especially when governments started strictly enforcing know your customer rules on them. So in order to sign up with an exchange, you have to identify yourself. Some even require you to send in a selfie with your ID. So any crypto that you purchase from an exchange is going to have all of your personal information tied to it, which can then be subpoenaed by law enforcement if they suspect any illegal activity. The exchanges are also the ones primarily buying crypto from the miners. And by doing this, they simultaneously reduce the supply of anonymous Bitcoins or Ethereum or whatever type of crypto that regular people could just purchase from the miners anonymously with cash. And they establish themselves as a central distributor of crypto. And like I said, they're attaching personal information to each transaction, completely identifying everybody. So now on to the good stuff. How does Monero thwart all of these attempts to centralize crypto? Well, it doesn't expose who sends how much to whom. Transactions are untraceable and unlinkable, so you can't be sure where any particular Monero originated from. Now, this is obviously very useful for criminal activity, but it has some practical applications as well for law-abiding citizens. Since Bitcoin balances are public, you might become a target if people find out that you have a lot of Bitcoin. Monero also has better fungibility since they are all the same, whereas a Bitcoin could be traced to some illegal activity, which means that most people aren't going to want to buy it because if you bought a Bitcoin that was used for something illegal, you might end up attracting the attention of law enforcement. So because of this, newly created Bitcoins are typically more value than a dirty Bitcoin. There's also the issue of track spending. So with a Bitcoin wallet, you're always going to have that same wallet address. And if you make all of your transactions using it, whether you're buying stuff at a store or you're buying stuff from Amazon using that Bitcoin wallet, they can track all of your transactions. They can use that to make some guesses about your spending habits. And a lot of people obviously don't like that. This is the same reason why a lot of people choose to use cash instead of a credit card so that all of their transactions can't be centralized and looked at to try and find things out about that person. So how does Monero implement all of these privacy features? Well, first, the sender's identity is obfuscated by ring signatures. 
So when a person signs a Monero transaction, their signature is combined with past signatures that are on the Monero blockchain, which make it impossible to determine exactly who sent the transaction. Then the amount is obfuscated by ring CT, which instead of broadcasting the amount being sent, it instead broadcasts a small bit of random information, which is able to verify that the transaction and the amount is legit without actually displaying the exact amount to the blockchain. And the receiver is able to stay private with a stealth address. Uh, which isn't actually your true wallet ID, but rather it is a wallet that only you can access with your real wallet ID to collect the funds. In fact, whenever you open up your Monero wallet, it scans the blockchain for these stealth addresses to see how much it can spend, uh, which ones it actually has access to, to see how much it can spend. So now you understand the privacy features of Monero, but it's also worth talking about how it is mined because this is another advantage that I think Monero has over other coins like Bitcoin or Ethereum. So you're solving complex math problems to form a proof of work, just like with Bitcoin and most other coins, but Monero uses a different algorithm called RandomX, which is resistant to ASICs. And if you haven't heard of an ASIC, it stands for Application Specific Integrated Circuit. It's basically like a specialized CPU that can only do one task. And oftentimes that one task is mine Bitcoin. So the reason that I consider this an advantage is because virtually any PC can be used to mine Monero. Whereas with Bitcoin, you essentially need to have a warehouse full of application-specific integrated circuits in order to get any meaningful amount of Bitcoin because these ASICs are able to mine thousands of times, well, maybe millions of times faster than a CPU because they can already do it thousands of times faster uh, than a GPU. Whereas Monero, their random X, you don't really get much advantage from using a GPU either. It's pretty much just meant to be mined by regular old CPUs. So this allows the miners to be more decentralized and just be regular people instead of almost all of the mining being done by large corporations and governments who are really the only people that can afford warehouses full of ASICs. And this also makes it much harder for a 51% attack to be pulled off with Monero compared to Ethereum or Bitcoin. And for those of you that don't know, a 51% attack is when a particular group of miners is able to control more than 50% of the network's hash rate, which allows those miners to prevent new transactions from gaining confirmations, allowing them to halt all of the payments between some or all of the users within that network. And finally, the total amount of Monero is not set to a fixed amount like with Bitcoin's 21 million. So the benefit of this is that there's less point of hoarding Monero like people do Bitcoin because people or more Monero is always going to be produced and there will always be an incentive to mine Monero. Whereas with Bitcoin, the only incentive to keep the miners doing the proof of work once all Bitcoins are mined would be transaction fees, which many people are skeptical is going to keep them mining. Uh, there's also the issue of all of the Bitcoins being destroyed. So a large portion of Bitcoins uh, have already been destroyed by people getting locked out of their wallets, people accidentally deleting their wallets, accidentally throwing away hard drives that had their wallets saved on them. And of course, destruction of Bitcoins causes the price to go up. It's basic supply and demand. Uh, but you don't have this with Monero. There could literally be a solar flare that happens tonight and wipes out all of the computers in the world, wipes out all of the Monero, and Monero will still be able to be mined once all of the electrical infrastructure is fixed and goes back online. Uh, same can't really be said with Bitcoin. Uh, and of course, there is the issue of centralized control of the currency. So with Bitcoin, you have such a small supply it's pretty easy for a group of people to acquire all of the world's Bitcoins or like 99% of the world's Bitcoins and then hoard them to just cause its value to artificially rise. In fact, this kind of happens already. If you look at the Bitcoin, um, if you look at the blockchain, you can see that 
I forget the exact percentage, but a fairly small percent of people control about 90% of the world's supply of Bitcoin. Uh, with Monero, this still technically could be possible, but more and more of it is always going to be mined. So that percentage is always going to change. So I hope you found this video informative. Uh, hopefully Monero makes a little bit more sense to you. And as always, have a great day.